Not time yet, Ezra. Not time yet. I smell skunk. Yes. <laughs> so do I. It's kind of cool. It's about 35 degrees or 182 Celsius this morning. I don't know how much gas is left in this. Guess we'll find out. I guess not that much. Oh, that's plenty. Where are we going with them, Hill? Right there. Okay. Hey, Hill, you can go ahead and put the other side on. Don't run back in. Where'd the hose go?
Who decided to put the chickens in the tall grass? I'm all wet. Need fishing waders out here or something like that. I guess you're gonna have to quit for the day. I guess so, yeah. Chicken bed and compost pile is steaming this morning. It's cooking. It'll make great fertilizer for the fields next year. It's too hot to take right out of the chicken house and spread on the fields. It burned the grass. Hot is in ammonia content, that is, not temperature. Oh, it looks brand new in here. It does. It's a lot better. <laughs> Alright, guys, here's breakfast. That's not going to work. That's not going to work either. Chicken house is done. Took us two days, not three days. Yeah. We went to bag feed for the pigs because we don't have enough to justify gravity wagon anymore. It sits too long in the wagon and goes stale. And these metal trash cans are nice and mouse proof. Boss, how are you? We'll go get some breakfast. Hey, Brownie. You always want me to say good morning, don't you? Billy boy. Hey, bud. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. I slop the pigs outside because there's only two of them. They don't need a separate water source. I can just water and feed them at the same time. It's easier. Pigs don't care if their water and food's all together. They like it. Hi hey ladies. Your water looks good. Hi Titus. What are you doing here all by yourself? Your water looks good. Why aren't you down eating with the herd, bud? Hey, you. Ow, another chewer. You are a curious one, aren't you? It's Friday. And that means I have to pack for farmer's market. 
Our farmer's market runs 50 out of 52 weeks every year. We get two weeks off around Christmas and that's it. Breakfast sausage. We need breakfast sausage. Where is it? Bacon. There are 11 chest freezers in here. Should I have a walk-in freezer? No. The chest freezers work much better for our side of operation. They use a lot less energy. They're redundant, so if one fails, I can move material to one of the other freezers. I can shut each of them down in turn as our stock runs lower and save energy that way. We can power them in a power outage using a 3,000 watt emergency generator that we have. They draw about one amps each when they're running, which is a fraction of the time, and they draw about seven amps each for a fraction of a millisecond upon startup. They work great. They're a better choice than a walk-in freezer. If you want more information, I got a video all about it back in the channel library. This is a steak week. Ribeyes. T-Bones, Porterhouse, Sirloins, nice sirloins, mm. Chuck Roasts are getting popular as it gets cooler. And I have to fix my sign because there's a big change in what we sell beginning this week going through the winter. We're all done with fresh chicken and all the chicken cuts are sold like boneless breasts, legs and thighs. They sell as fast as we cut them. So that's it for chicken until the end of May next year. We got quite a few whole chickens, but this stuff's going to run out pretty fast. And pork is changing too. Pork items are getting fewer and fewer as we sell out, not to be resupplied. And I need to do some revision on the beef items. Premium steaks back in stock for a few weeks anyway. And that concludes another edition of Packing for Market. What did the cannibal request for his last meal? What? Five guys. Bye, guys. Didn't we do this once already today? I think we did. This is how you roll up Electronet for the season. If you do it any other way, you're going to have a heck of a time getting it straightened out the next year. Posts go on the end. Use it till it fails. We need to get the drinkers out of.
of these broiler boxes here. the two ends together. This is the wire we ran off the perimeter fence to make the poultry, the broiler boxes, electric fence hot. This stuff is handy to have around. This is where we pile all the feeders and drinkers on top of the old baler. Fencing goes upstairs in the garage, safe from mice. Pretty much. in here for the winter. Keep the lids from blowing away. 
That feels good to get done. They're all put away for the winter. And once the layers move off pasture around the end of this month, then we can turn the cattle loose on here to graze off anything that's left. Another good job done to get ready for winter. In the last series of videos, I've shared Hillary and I's thoughts about which way to go forward, both with our lives and our work. And I realized sharing that, number one, it puts you in a vulnerable place doing that. Number two, there's a whole generation before me that never would have shared that. They would have just kept plugging along as miserable as they may be. I'm not that sort of person. I'm open to share that with folks who are trying to make similar decisions. I went through this big time when I left architecture. So I do it in the spirit of trying to be helpful. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.